Hi guys! It's another lovely Talanche Tuesday here at the Elton Grown Garden by Longo B. In this video I'm going to talk about the first ever airplane that I've got that led me to create the OGG. Today's spotlight is on Talanche Akaput Merce. Airplane Profile The Caput Medusa is a gorgeous airplane with wide, thick, sturdy leaves that are soft to the touch. Touch my voice. It also has the prettiest silvery green leaves and can grow up to 15 to 40 centimeters. It is a flowering plant with epiphytic habit that means it clings. It clings. <laughs> it means it clings to trees using its roots, but it's not parasitic. When it blooms, it develops the prettiest blush of tubular blue-red flowers. By the way. Speaking of blooms, one of my talents I could put me to say is starting to bloom. Well, it's actually already blooming. Somebody's happy. This gorgeous airplane belongs to the genus within the family of the Bermudaceae. God, I'm not really sure how it's pronounced, but it's something like that. They are native to South America, mainly Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. I don't exactly know where most of those places are, but that's according to Google. Trust. Talanche Kaput Medusa is also known as, a, as head of Medusa, due to a visually obvious reason, the snake-shaped leaves. Its exotically bizarre look is exactly the main reason why I got attracted to it. Watch my video on how I started growing air plants using the link on the descriptions below, or the cards here. Yeah, here. Light. Talanche Kaput Medusa is very well in indirect sunlight. Direct light is not the best choice as it can scorch its leaves. A spot near the window with mild sunlight is ideal. In the case of bright sunlight at a south window, make sure that shadowing is available as this plant usually hides in canopy of trees in the wild. Temperature As you may expect with a rainforest plant, it likes it warm. That's why it is said that the best place to grow the Talanche Kaput Medusa is indoors rather than outside to best replicate its native environment. It thrives in an environment with a minimum temperature of 15 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 40 degrees Celsius. But who's counting? Water. Talanche Kaput Medusa is a bulbous air plant, which means it has a hollow, onion shaped base. In the wild, these ant plants have a symbiotic cohabitation with ants. Their so-called pseudobulbs are hollow, which can easily trap water and cause the plant to rot from the inside out. A couple of these ant plants unfortunately, unfortunately died under my care, before I figure out how to really make them happy. Never soak your Talanche Kaput Medusa. This was the mistake I made before. After a few deaths, I stopped soaking my bulbous plants. Talanche Kaput Medusa prefers to be misted twice a week and make sure to shake out excess water after heavy mist mistings and let your airplane dry within 4 hours to avoid rotting. Placing it near a ventilator for a bit of air circulation when drying would also help. Like any other air plant, a good indicator that your Kaput Medusa is thirsty is the curvature of its leaves which begins to curl tightly when it needs water. You might also want to check the tips of the leaves for any signs of dehydration, like um, browning. For more examples of air plants that you should not soak, you can check on our OGG video on the topic. The link is below. Or here. Fertilizing. It's not necessary to fertilize your air plants, but if you want to encourage blooming, then it can be an option. Talanche Kaput Medusa, like all other air plants, collects nutrients from the air. So personally, I use liquid fertilizers on my Talanche Kaput Medusa twice a month in between normal watering. The frequency and interval would depend primarily on the contents of the fertilizer that you're using. I use 20 drops of concentrated air plant liquid fertilizer, which I mix in 2 liters of filtered water. Just be careful in using too much fertilizer since this could cause burn on the leaves. You should ideally administer the fertilizer during the evening hours for better uptake of nutrients. Propagation After flowering, your Talanche Kaput Medusa will produce pops. This is the best way of propagating them. 
since doing this with seeds from flowers through pollination may take you forever, if not possible. Just remember not to cut the pops off the mother plant before the leaves have reached a length of 10 centimeters, or if the pop is one third of the mother plant. If you want to check on a collection of Talantia Kabut Medicinas, you can check out. You can check. You can look me up on Instagram at Let's Palencia. Okay guys, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And like this video and comment down below. Guys, don't be shy. Thank you very much. Be safe, be healthy, stay home. Until the next one. Bye.